You've spent months waiting for your favorite character, and they're finally here. You pull them and even get lucky, or, uh... Maybe not, but after some... And now you want to be the best. You want to stand among the most elite players in the game that kill that one dinosaur 0.2 seconds faster than everybody else. Oh my god, you're so tall, you look like a giraffe. Mm, that's why you dead built like a baked bean. A baked bean? A BAKED BEAN! <laughs> BAKED BEAN THAT! BAKED BEAN THAT! You want to become a top 1% main for your character. Well, you've, uh, come to a place, that's for sure. For this guide, we will be using every Meadow player's favorite edge site. Say it with me now, Akasha Systems. If you have no clue what this is, basically it's a site where you can gauge your character's statistics with others and see where you place in a global leaderboard compared with millions of other players. Now, if we just come right to the leaderboards here, it says leaderboards are meant to compare artifact strength only. Well, f yeah, so Akasha isn't really the most intricate leaderboard system per se, because it only places you in a leaderboard for meta-heavy teams, which, in Akasha's case, seems to only recognize 82 different builds. So, uh, theoretically, using our hypothesis, let's just say that potentially there is a chance that I wanted to, uh, <laughs> that I wanted to, <coughs> that, that I wanted to become a top 1% alloy main. So, let, let's just go over here here and uh, find Aloy and uh, fuck. Yeah, so you can see Akasha doesn't let you compare just any character on the leaderboard. It has to be somewhat of a meta character on their 82 leaderboard list of team comps. Now let's talk about getting ourselves higher up on that leaderboard. Remember, the only thing that matters for this leaderboard ranking system is what they define as artifact strength. And what the Genshin community widely accepts as artifact strength is crit value, or CV. Which is a number acquired by taking the crit rate stat and doubling it while adding the crit damage stat to that number. And whatever number you obtain from that artifact would be out of a 54.4 CV. Which represents the cap on how much CV an artifact can roll with. Akasha primarily uses this artifact ranking system because crit rate and crit damage are the best stat on an artifact when calculating damage numbers. However, Akasha also warns you that objectively ranking artifacts for every scenario is impossible. Here's a prime example. This is Cock. Ranking time. I'll have you know that I, Sangonomiya Kokomi, do not have a cock. Cock has a negative crit rate, but that's okay because Cock is a healer. Crit value is bad for Cock. I'm tired of this rumor going around that I have a cock because my name is Kokomi. That is untrue and it is a completely disgusting thing to say. Cock is an HP scaler, so HP beats CV in Cock scenario. To simplify that explanation, while CV for one character may mean a lot, it might mean nothing for another character. So we also have to think about other artifact substats as well, as artifact strength is a lot more than just CV. So now that you're aware of artifact strength and how it's different for every character in different team comps, let's find out what stats you need to focus on. On Akasha, if you go to the leaderboard tab and find your character and build that most closely resembles the team comp you're going for, click on it and type in your UID, then expand your profile and head to show substat priority. In my case, for Hyper Ride and Burst, you can see that I'm royally f- To get higher on the leaderboard in the Ride and Hyper Carry category, I need to focus on Flat Attack, Attack Percentage, Energy Recharge, Crit Rate, and Crit Damage. All of these stats add to your Artifact Strength, but just remember, Akasha places priority in certain stats being better than others. So pay attention to the gradient of Light Green versus Dark Green, Dark Green in this case being more of a priority than Light Green stats. Stats, which would ultimately put you higher up on that leaderboard. Now that we know how to become a top 1% player on Akasha, I am going to demonstrate how to put that to the test by spending 40 fragile resin and capping out my artifact slots. Now, after pulling C3, R1, Raiden, Triple Crowning, and Level 90 her in the same day, I'm going to focus on the Raiden Hyper Carry category. For some context, I've been awaiting her banner for about six months, and throughout that time, I've been only farming the emblem domain. And these are the artifacts I currently have after six months.
months of pre-farming. Not too bad, but things can definitely be better. Again, Raiden Hyper focuses on five different stats, making her one of the hardest characters to build stat-wise in the entire game. I'm top 28%. We haven't done anything yet. This is just me with my bare bones artifacts that I just scraped together. Now that we established our base rank of top 28% in the entire world, let's see what the 1% of the 1% actually look like. Specifically, let's check out my man, uh, Robert. As you can see, Robert is placed one out of 456,000, but let's analyze what stats got him there. He has 2,000 attack. After he got 2,000 attack, it seems like he invested more in electro damage, more in crit damage, and uh, rates, and ER. Now, if we put my stats right next to Robert's stats, you can clearly see that I fucked up somewhere, because this looks like an absolute clown fest. So, uh, yeah, we need to fix this, like, right now. Now, something I did notice about Robert, who again, is at the time of this recording, the number one Raiden main was running an Electro Goblet, which I kinda found interesting, considering Akasha only gauges substats as artifact strength. And obviously, Electro Damage is only a main stat role. This got me curious about how Akasha measures an Elemental Damage artifact. So as a test, I got rid of my 35 CV Attack Goblet and replaced it with an Electro Goblet that had 15 CV to see what happens. 20% ER is crazy. And that's an electro damage bonus piece with uh, a little bit of damage and a little bit of rate to top it off. But the ER is crazy on this. I might run this. See, the thing about electro damage or like elemental damage in general, you don't need to crit. This is going to increase your damage whether you crit or not. This, you have to get lucky. This is like gambling. So that's why I'm kind of thinking about an electro goblin. So we're going to go with increased electro damage. Now I have more ER, which in turn means I have more electro damage from her passive. Oh, it updated. We're at, we're top 20%. Now all we did was change a single artifact. That's really, really good. I'll take it. Yeah, so I'm not gonna lie. That kind of made me f nut a little. I went from rank 28% all the way down to top 20 off of a single artifact that statistically was worse in a couple of ways. Listen, I don't know if I broke Akasha or if by some miracle putting on an elemental damage piece counted as a priority stat, but either way it worked and it's kind of a hidden gem. Now, before we get into spending all of our resin on capped artifact slots later in this video, I wanted to get my team to closely resemble the Hyper Raiden team comp shown on Akasha. Now, if you're following along with your own team comp of choice, Akasha assumes that you're a high free-to-play invested account, meaning they assume that you have a certain amount of cons and specific weapons running with their team setup. In my case, Akasha assumes that I have C2 Raiden Shogun with R1 Engulfing Lightning, which I do have. Kujo Sara at C6, which I do have. Bennett at C6 with a Kia Favonia and a four piece Noblesse, which I do have. And finally, Kazuo with the four piece Veridis and Veneer. F okay, so we don't have Kazuo, but I do closely want to resemble the Hyper Carry team and maintain the same concept of everyone in the team is buffing the on field character. So we have to beat Akasha at their own game. I'm tasked with either making a team that's on par with this one or making one that beats it entirely. And I choose the latter. It's time for the moment you've been waiting for. Duh. Preparing the crap. Chevrus no diffs Kazuha so hard it's actually unreal. You see, Kazuha's passive grants an elemental damage bonus of 0.04% for each point of elemental mastery that he has. If we go over to the top 
50% swirl damage, Kazuha, we can see that they have around 1,000 EM on a perfectly built Kazuha, which would ultimately come around to about 40% elemental damage bonus for the swirled element, along with a VV artifact set buff, which decreases elemental res by 40% of the swirled element. Now let's talk about Shivrusi at C6. Passive talent number one grants 40% elemental res shred. Passive talent number two increases attack by 40%. C6 grants 60% electro and pyro bonus at max stacks. Four piece tenacity grants 20% increased attack. And finally, since we have double pyro, elemental resonance grants plus 25% attack. As you can see, there is a very big difference with the amount of on field character buffs being applied. And so, after some intense farming, what? Where am I? I think I finally made a better Raiden Hyper Carry team than the one on Akasha. We are sitting at top 20% in the entire world, across all regions, all servers. And again, we have kind of mid-ish artifacts. Haven't really invested heavily. We're gonna invest right now. We invested in her supports for the last three hours. Now it was time to spend 40 Fragile Resin to cap out our artifact slots at 1,800 artifacts. And I also opened up my world for any viewer that wanted to join. That was a bad decision. Is that you and Jean, Zin Yan? What the f- What are these team setups? Do you think Raiden knows about artifacts? And like farming artifacts? Raiden, what substats should I get on your artifacts? On my artifact set, you should aim for as much crit rate and crit DMG as possible. Additionally, some energy recharge would also be beneficial. Try your best to get these substats on as many pieces as you can. If things work out well for you, you'll be able to increase the damage output of your attacks significantly. She said aim for crit rate and crit damage, additionally with some ER. She just built herself. She actually built herself good. She, she picked like the three best stats in the game. Raiden, are you excited to be more powerful? Indeed. The mere thought of gaining more strength and becoming even stronger fills my heart with joy. I am very excited to see how my power increases in the near future. I am also quite grateful that you are helping me along the way. Without your support, this achievement would be impossible. Interesting, thank you for the input. You're welcome. As the Electro Archon, there is a great variety of ways to use me effectively in battle. I think the two of us should spend some time together as a reward for your diligence. Dude, I want a jerk off! After about an hour of spending resin, we finally did it. We're kind of forced to strongbox. I don't have any artifact slots. <laughs> I didn't think I'd run into this issue. Does that mean I have 1,800 artifacts in my inventory? Oh my god. Yeah, we have 1,800 artifacts. We have grinded... How much resin have we grinded? A lot of resin. Now, obviously, 40 Fragile Resin is not going to cap us out at 1,800 artifacts, but prior to making this video, I saved up all my 5-star artifacts I got from a month of domain farming, just to make this happen. And I'm pretty sure out of 1,807 out of 1,800 artifacts in my inventory, you're about to witness one of the largest strongboxing sessions you have ever seen. Oh, come on. That's bad. That's bad. That's bad. That's really, really good. Yo, I'm not gonna lie, I don't have a healer. I don't have a healer to use this for, but I'm gonna save it anyways. That's the most insane healing bonus piece. I never thought I'd get excited over a healing bonus piece. Dude, I don't care how much you've strongboxed. This is the biggest strongboxing session I've ever seen. Okay, I'm just gonna cut it short. We strongboxed a lot, and obviously not everything was great, but let's just say that I was very picky 
about the pieces I was saving. As someone who already has decent artifacts, the only way to beat that is by rolling above average pieces. In my case, I was getting so overwhelmed with the pieces that had potential that I knew when I was leveling the artifacts later, I would not have enough fodder to max out everything. Here's a perfect example of what you can consider a piece that has potential. You can clearly see it's a three liner with a good main stat roll and even one crit roll. And now here's an example of an above average piece that I was saving my artifact XP for instead. This artifact is a four liner with energy recharge and a good main stat roll. I think you see what I mean now. Anyways, I think we're done strong boxing artifacts. Yo! <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. We strongboxed 429 artifacts. That... <laughs> that's a lot of f***ing artifacts. Before leveling artifacts, I first wanted to see what the top three best players were running and find a pattern to increase my rank even further. What about this guy? This guy's top 1% riding. Is he running ER Sands? He is. They have a lot less attack than I do. I'm too heavily invested in attack. Way, way too invested in attack. That's because I think they're running an ER Sans. I need an ER Sans. He's taking a different approach. He has a lot more attack. As you can see, all these players do something a little different. So it was really hard to narrow down a clear cut stat to focus on. But what I did notice is my man Robert and Shiroshi were both running ER Sans. So maybe I should focus there. That's our only double crit ER Sans. Okay, okay, let's run this, let's run this. That's not gonna cut it, man. We'll go with this. Two attack, rate, ER Sands again. Okay, it went rate. It went rate again, guys. It went attack. Okay, I'll take attack because we're actually giving up an attack Sands to put in this ER Sands. So this is not that bad. Do I want to roll another one? I absolutely do. We can do an off piece Sands. We'll level this four liner with damage and then I'm done. I keep gambling on the Sands. I really want a good Sands. See, like, that went defense! Like, come on, man! And that went attack. Yeah, no. I ran out of ER Sands to level, so my next priority stat was finding that perfect Electro Goblet. That's so bad. We're gonna put that right into this piece. Boom. What is it gonna be? Yo! Everything went into rate and attack so far. What's our last stat gonna be? We got damage! That is a much better goblet. Surely that boosts us up on the leaderboard. How am I 19%? I went up 1%. Four liner with rate and damage. Let's do it right now. EM again? All right, we have another try. Same piece. It avoided damage completely. It went every other stat, man. No. Double crit flower with the ER. It went damage! You! Oh my god. Let, let's hope we get crit damage. Am I getting crit damage? I got attack. What about this? Am I gonna get crit damage? I got EM. Okay, we'll try a, a third time. Yeah, we'll try a third time. Am I getting a... No, that's attack. We have another four liner. Damage. I wake up now. Damage! I am awake. I am wide awake. Damage! I am, I am really wide awake right now. Yo! <laughs> I am wide awake. We just spent 40 fragile resin. What the hell am I? Now, after hours of building a hyper carry team and artifact grinding, my final rank at the end of the day is 18 percent. My stats are 67 crit rate over 127 crit damage, 269 ER with 2,054 attack, and 114 electro damage. Okay, you know what? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> After staring at this for a while, I uh, kind of get why I'm placed where I am. I can definitely improve, but considering that we started at a 28%, I think I'll take it. Now let's go back to everyone's favorite dinosaur and see that damage number.
I went over a lot of specifics in my demonstration, but these concepts really can be applied to any character. Just don't listen to Akasha too closely, take it with a grain of salt, and get a little creative. After all, this game is just for fun, it's not a competitive game by any means. If I increased your rank on Akasha at all, please drop a like on this video and maybe comment for my good friend Robert over there. And for the 82% of Raiden mains that I beat during this video, I want you guys to know something. Your life is nothing. You serve zero purpose. You should eat yourself. Now.